was a lot. Good morning and welcome, Banneker family. But before I get started, if you need a headset for a translator, we have those services in the lobby upstairs. So again, if you need a translator, we have the services available for anyone who needs those services available in the lobby upstairs. Welcome, Banneker family, friends, and most importantly, the class of 2023. <laughs> I am honored and humbled to be here today on behalf of the Benjamin Banneker Academic High School's family. Welcome to the 40th commencement program. Thank you to the students, teachers, and staff. My sincere appreciation to Mr. Alvin Huff, Broadway Music Director, an amazing 2002 graduate of Banneker. As you can see, graduates have many, many different talents, and you will hear some of his talents after he gets up here to speak. We have additional distinct, distinguished platform guests, including Dr. Frazier Leary, Vice President of the D.C. State Board of Education. Deputy, let's give him a hand. <laughs> Deputy Chancellor, Dr. Juana Bay. Assistant Principal Alicia Shaw, and Assistant Principal Dr. Benjamin Williams. Let's give them a hand. Parents, thank you for your unyielding support and unconditional love you have shown throughout this, your senior's tenure at Banneker. You are the number one factor in their success. I will also take this moment to recognize Banneker's outstanding and most talented team of teachers and staff who all have contributed to the success of the class of 2023. Please stand up, <laughs> teachers and staff. They have been relentless. Thank you. And I would be remiss not to recognize and thank the distinguished members of this class, the class of 2023. Please stand so we can officially give you a big hand. Thank you. This is a very special and memorable occasion in the lives of the Banneker family. We assemble here today to celebrate and honor the 138 members of this class of achievers. They have truly achieved collectively. They have earned over $72 million in scholarships and awards. We're also most appreciative for the, uh, and grateful for the entertainment and sports arena for hosting us and everyone else in attendance today. <laughs> we have gathered here this morning to celebrate the students that worked so hard to get to this pivotal point in their lives. Each year, I would like to recognize some of those students. Each year, students are selected uh, and recognized by the Office of the Chancellor for a variety of reasons. I would like to recognize those students at this time. And if I call your name, please come up to the podium as quickly and safely as possible, if you have on those heels, to come and get your award. This young man has improved tremendously since the ninth grade year. Not only is he smarter, but faster. As a first time member of Banneker's Championship Boys Track and Field team, he has, um, he has found his way Please help me in recognizing the most improved student for the class of 2023, Ernest Venable. Come up, Ernest. Please come up, Ernest. He is on his way to sunny Oswego. He's really fast on that track. Okay. 
Let's give them another hand. This next recognition is for someone who is always willing to assist and lead the way. In fact, this achiever has been an active leader on both the girls' softball and volleyball teams. Please assist me in recognizing Jordan Reed for her relentless leadership skills. She will be attending North Carolina State in the fall. When you think of citizenship, this achiever is the first one to come to mind. She's never out of character. She's been a student advocate for the student safety, collaborating with the DC Office of Student Advocacy. The Citizenship Award goes to Kalkadan Kabedi, who will be attending Northeastern University in the fall. Congratulations. This next recognition is for someone who is not only phenomenal in the classroom, but phenomenal as a track and field and basketball athlete. The most outstanding student award, student athlete award goes to Joelle Walker. She will be attending North Carolina Central University in the fall. Give her a hand. This neck rec recognition is for an achiever that exceeded the 270 hours of Banneker required community service. In fact, this student has completed 555 community service hours. The Outstanding Community Service Award goes to Sierra Jefferson with the college destination of Rochester University. Let's give her a hand. This next, re next recognition goes to another young man who has not only mastered the English language, but has mastered passing several AP exams. The Exceptional English Language Learner Award goes to Abeniza Abate. He will be attending University of Maryland College Park in the fall. The next achievement goes to someone who is unassuming but always smiling. The Principal's Achievement Award goes to Bigurthy Mills, who will be attending Cornell University this fall. Where are you, Tangi? Congratulations. The next student award has the second highest cumulative GPA, the salutatorian. This achiever has a 4.839 GPA. 
just an exceptional achiever. I am honored to recognize at this time Mary Toller, salutatorian. She will be attending Northwestern University in the fall. Wow, four points, that's, that's a lot. The next res recognition is for an outstanding achievement, academic achievement again. More specifically, this award is for the students with the highest cumulative GPA in the class of 2023, the valedictorian. I am honored to first publicly announce that the cumulative 4.5875 GPA, Maddie Isaacs. Maddie will be attending Princeton University in the fall. Okay, let's see. Uh, you can figure it out. She's going to figure that one out. Congratulations, Maddie. So what? This time, I just want this recognition for this person to just stand. Each year, we recognize an educator who inspires in a variety of ways. Not only do they inspire, but they also teach, and more importantly, listen. This educator does all of that and more. In fact, this educator once sat in the same seat as our graduates. He is a Banneker alum. I'm proud to announce that Mr. James McFadden, please stand. Where are you, Mr. McFadden? Just stand, just stand. Thank you. Outstanding Educator Award. Let's give him a hand. He just so happened to be in my advisory uh, back in 2010. It's all good. Um, so at this time, we will follow the program as printed, and we will bring Mary up for some words. Good morning. Distinguished guests, faculty, my amazing family, and most importantly, my fellow graduates of the class of 2023. My name is Mary Tola, and with immense gratitude, I stand before you here today as a proud salutatorian of our graduating class. First and foremost, I must thank God for the reason I stand here today. Thank you for keeping an eye on me when I was close to giving up, giving me the patience to write endless papers, and for giving me the courage and the strength to overcome the past four years. Now, as many of you guys probably know, already can tell by my forehead or by my voice, I'm Ethiopian. And with the way I grew up, family has always been the most important thing to me. I'm grateful to my family, both here with me very loudly, and those back in Ethiopia who couldn't be here, but I know support me from afar. Thank you to my grandma, Ayate, my aunts and uncles, Akistina Gotoche, my cousins, and a special thank you to my late grandfather, Wend Ayate, whom I lost too early, but I know has been guiding me from above. My family are my biggest supporters, who cry when I cry and laugh when I laugh. I wouldn't be anywhere without their enormous love and support. 
ይሄ ወጣይት ይሄ ሽልማት የኔ ስራ ብቻ አይደለም እናንተም ነው እንለዛ ከልብ ያመሰግናቸዋለሁ I am forever grateful to my dad who sacrificed so much by migrating to this country of endless possibilities in order to give me the opportunities that he never had Thank you to my beautiful and supportive mother Mama thank you so much for always believing in me and even when I struggle to do so myself Also a special thank you to my dear brother my study partner and partner in crime Emmanuel Tola who not only pushes me to do my best but keeps me humble with his countless jokes but now jokes on you Emmanuel because I survived Banneker and now it's your turn <laughs> and to my incredible friends thank you all for being by my side through thick and thin shout out to the IB crew for surviving the cold allegations, the endless crying sessions, and the challenges or torture of their international baccalaureate program. You've made my high school experience truly unforgettable, and it is very hard to say goodbye. And now, on behalf of the graduating class, I extend heartfelt gratitude to our teachers and admin staff. Your dedication for education has shaped our minds nurtured our dreams and inspired us to reach for the stars. Thank you for not only never failing to dress code us, making us remove our hoodies and always taking away our smart watches, but also <laughs> for shaping us into the individuals we are today. We are forever grateful. And to our principal, Ms. Berger, your unfound leadership and unwavering belief in our potential has been the foundation of our excellence. Today we stand here as a testament to the transformative power of education at Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. Lastly, I'd like to thank the graduating class of 2023 for not only our hard work, but also our dedication and perseverance. Despite challenges like the global pandemic, we flourished. And as we embark on the next chapter of our lives, let's chase our dreams and desires because there really isn't anything in the world that we cannot do. So my fellow graduates, as we bid farewell to this chapter of our lives and embrace the unknown, let's cherish the laughter, the love, and even the tears that brought us here. Remember, that life is a comedy, not a tragedy, and facing the future with positivity is the best way forward. Thank you all for being a part of my journey, and congratulations to the class of 2023. Let's conquer the world together. Good morning, friends, family, and staff. My name is Maddie Isaac, and I am honored to speak to you today as your 2023 valedictorian. <laughs> and to the illustrious class of 2023, we did it. Today, we will join the exclusive club of Benjamin Banneker Academic High School graduates. Not only are we graduates of the best high school in DC, but as we like to say, we are the last best class. <laughs> now I know that our journey at Banneker has not always been smooth sailing. We are the last class to be in person at Euclid Street. Who remembers when we had full access to microwaves, those yellow and orange seats in the cafeteria, or those flying bugs? Not these freshmen. The ones who know, know. If our time at Banneker was a movie, it would be called Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. We've had plenty of plot twists, like the global pandemic, epic battles, like the Capitol insurrection, tragic moments, like the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and brushes with death, 
last week's apocalyptic air conditions. Yet, we've also had triumphs. We've come out $72 million richer. We've won science fairs, DCIAA honors, and poetry at loud competitions. We have positively impacted our communities, whether through a One World Challenge speech on homelessness, working to ensure a safe passage to school for DC students, educating our peers on sexual health with the Mary Center, or brightening the school community with African Student Union fashion shows. Our resilience, hard work, courage, and character have proved that we can withstand any obstacle and leave any place better than we found it. As we leave the stadium today and begin the next phase of our lives, let us not forget what we've learned from Banneker and each other. The enrichment we get from serving our communities and being civically engaged. How education can break generational curses. How to find the good in a bad situation. The importance of a strong support system. And as I always say, you reap the seeds you sow. Remember to stay true to yourself because as we leave the safe enclave of Banneker, we may encounter spaces or people where we will not be appreciated for our brilliance, our humor, or our kindness, but judged for factors beyond our control. We are entering a world full of uncertainty, a world that may not seem fair for us to inherit. But from these past four years with you, I know that there is no better group of individuals to face these challenges. Before I go, I want to give a few thanks, and I hope you all will join me in giving gratitude to those who have guided us along our journeys. Thank you to my teachers, who have instilled me with confidence as a learner and helped me grow as a person. You're doing God's work. Thank you to our guidance counselors, whose hard work ensures the continued success of Banneker seniors, and to our amazing Banneker administration, who continuously fight for us and to protect the legacy of this great school. Thank you to my day one friends and those I've gained along the way, especially those 24 special individuals that I have been blessed to spend the past two years with in IB. I will miss our matching outfits, our potlucks, and Secret Santa. You all have truly made my high school experience. Thank you to my family, those here in the audience, like my two brothers, Elijah and Ellis, who pushed me to the edge, but also to do my best, and those who may see this later on Facebook. Especially to my parents, Makita and Joseph, who've listened to me rant and cry. <laughs> who've laughed with me, who've loved me unconditionally and let me fly. Finally, thank you to my fellow Banneker achievers. I will cherish the readers we've eaten together, the ballroom dancing classes at Banneker Summer Institute, and those pep rallies where we screamed until our voices went raw. Last week, during our word ceremony practice, I had a startling realization. Yes, we were annoying, loud, and off key, but we are forever bonded by these four years together. And I had an overwhelming sense of bittersweet sadness, but gratitude. So to my classmates, whether I see you on the train this summer, or visiting Banneker, as all alumni inevitably do, know that if you ever feel down, you have 137 other people who will be there to lift you up. Thank you to the last great class. I'm done. Families and friends, distinguished guests, faculty members, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2023, my name is Bethel Ayel, and I served as the SGA president this year. And it is my great honor and privilege today to introduce our esteemed guest speaker, Mr. Alvin Huff, Jr. As we gather here to celebrate the achievements of our remarkable graduates, we are privileged to have Mr. Huff with us a true inspiration and a shining example of determination and success. 
Mr. Huff is a husband, father, renowned pianist, music director, and supervisor of Broadway's New York, New York, The Piano Lesson, Tina, the Tina Turner Musical, and is credited in several other projects on and off Broadway. Alvin has also worked on numerous films and TV series from Spirited to Annie Live and the South Park 25th Anniversary Commercial Series. Mr. Huff's greatest accomplishment, though, is being a former Banneker Bulldog. <laughs> Raised in DC, Mr. Huff was only five years old when he began to put, <laughs> when he began playing piano. And with his classical training, Mr. Huff has performed at the Kennedy Center, the Capitol, and at the White House for the Clinton family. Though the DC, through the DC Boys Choir, Mr. Huff has had the opportunity to perform in Austrian opera houses and Parisian cathedrals. At 13 years old, Mr. Huff's piano teacher introduced him to colleagues that would widen his musical scope and he credits her for seeing his talent and advocating for him to play Sunday morning services, inspiring his in influence from gospel music and opening his eyes to the world of musical theater. Mr. Huff was actually a graduate of Harvard College where he majored in earth and planetary sciences and earned a master's degree in meteorology from the Georgia Institute of Technology. Mr. Huff's passion and love for music led him to New York and embarked him on the extraordinary life he has led so far. Graduates, as you stand on the precipice of a new chapter in your lives, I implore you to absorb every word that Mr. Huff shares with us today. His experience and wisdom will undoubtedly provide you with the guidance and inspiration you need to navigate the challenges and seize the opportunities that lie ahead of you. So now, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Mr. Alvin Huff Jr., a remarkable individual who embodies the values of perseverance, determination, and compassion. Let us embrace his presence today and may his words resonate within our hearts as we celebrate the achievements of our graduating class and embark on a journey of lifelong learning and success. Thank you. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, graduates, faculty, parents, friends, siblings, everyone. Uh, my name is Alvin Huff Jr. and I am currently the music director and conductor of the new Broadway show, New York, New York. But as already stated, more importantly, I am a proud Banneker graduate of the class of 2002 and it is my absolute pleasure to be in the room where this is happening. Um, now, I, pl I have plenty to say to the class of 2023, but I must first start with some thank yous. I haven't had the privilege of meeting every member, every current member of the Banneker faculty, but to all of you, I say thank you. I haven't had the privilege of meeting every parental figure in this room, in this auditorium today, but I, I say thank you to all of you. This group of 138 students wouldn't be proudly sitting here if it weren't for each and every one of you. My mom and my two kids are here, they're six and four. Uh, I have a special message for them. Uh, mom, thank you for always supporting me and for giving me the right amount of space to learn how to become a man. I know I'm a better parent because of you. And to Samuel and Camille, in a dozen years or so, there won't be a single dad with a bigger smile on his face when you graduate from high school. But for now, keep being the smart, curious, and kind big kid you are. Daddy loves you. And now you, the graduates. Uh, I know this is the last thing between you and your diplomas, so hear me out. 21 years ago, I sat where you now sit. And I remember being both excited and scared. Now, it would be easy for me to focus on the excited part of those feelings, but I don't want to take the easy road. And neither should you. I'm here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with being scared, nervous, unsure. People ask me all the time, 
If I get nervous before playing piano or conducting a choir or an orchestra in the public, damn right I do. The day I don't get nervous is the day I should quit. Can I say that again? The day I don't get nervous is the day I should quit. Because to me, that would mean I didn't care anymore. Apathy is your greatest enemy. And I challenge you to remove that word from your vocabulary. Now, show of hands. Yes, participation, show of hands. Who thinks you got everything figured out and know exactly what you want out of life? Okay. Okay, great, great. Now, who's a little apprehensive about your short-term future and where it might take you? A little bit, okay. You can be honest. Guess what? You're both right. Everybody's right. When I got to Harvard, I was pre-med. When I left, I had a bachelor's in earth and planetary sciences. And I went to Georgia Tech, got my master's in meteorology, and now I'm one of a handful of successful black music directors and conductors on Broadway. How did... How did that happen? I'll tell you in a minute, but the punchline is, there is no singular correct path to whatever your goals are. Everyone's path is unique, and as long as you build on your past experiences and continue to hold yourself accountable for whatever mistakes you make along the way, you will achieve your success. As for me, someone did a good job reading my website, I see, huh? As for me, I started playing piano when I was five. My teacher was a retired DC public schools music teacher, and she trained me classically. Her name was Norma McRae. And when I th turned 13, she told me, she wasn't quite as blunt as this, you know, she was teaching me. She told me, she said, if, I, if you ever want to play music for a living, because you're starting to get good at this, kid, if you ever want to play music for a living, you're not going to make a lot of money if all you can play is Bach and Chopin. And she was right. But her area of expertise was classical music, but she had colleagues who excelled in other musical, musical genres. I was already singing in the DC Boys Choir at the time under the, wonder, under the wonderful direction of Miss Eleanor Stewart, who is here today. I love you so much. And Norma and Eleanor were, they were besties. So through them, the summer I turned 13 had a huge part in shaping my life. I went to a Michigan Park Christian Church over on South Dakota and Taylor. And Norma told the minister of music uh, slash organist there that I would be playing during Sunday morning services. Now, classical training, mind you. I had no idea how to cite transpose a song, but I learned. I didn't know how to play with a drummer, but I learned. I didn't know how to follow a soloist who had forgotten her lyrics, but I learned. That same summer, I was introduced to other colleagues of Norma and Eleanor's, and they were running a theater camp at the JCC on Montrose Road out in Rockville. I didn't know anything about theater, and after some initial struggles, I was befriended by a really cool guitarist who taught me about how to play with a band. I really enjoyed that summer, went back for the next six, and kept developing this new, newly found passion for theater. Now my mom over there, always supported with me in my musical endeavors, but she had to keep it real. What if you break a I, I, I heard you laugh. What if you break a finger? Then what? What else do you really enjoy? Turns out I enjoyed bad weather. Does that make me weird a little bit? Kind of? I've often said that if I got the best imaginable job opportunity in the world that was ever possible, but if I had to move to L.A., I wouldn't take it because I'd miss the seasons. I'd get bored of 70 and sunny all the time. I uh, became fascinated with following weather patterns and phenomena, studying the topography of different regions, how it affected certain microclimates. And the next thing I knew, I was drawn to the science behind weather forecasting and modeling. One of the deciding factors in uh, me choosing Georgia Tech for a master's program in meteorology was the partnership that they had with both CNN and the Weather Channel, which have headquarters in Atlanta. After graduating from Harvard in 2006 and taking a gap year, I went to Atlanta in August of 2007, finished in three semesters, but there was a slight problem. While we were going on tours of CNN and the, and the Weather Channel, we were told in secret that they would soon be laying people off because of the growing economic recession, meaning there wouldn't be any job openings for us. So here I am, December 2008, 
with two degrees that are essentially meaningless because I couldn't find a job. Okay, so at Banneker, there are things you've learned here of which you aren't even aware. Um, that biology pop quiz that you didn't see coming, sure. Your teacher wanted to capture your grasp of the material that day, but I bet that was more of a test on whether or not you can adapt when thrown a curveball. And that's my next challenge to you. Stay ready. Take the poise you've gained here and use it when you might least expect to because you never know when your break just might fall into your lap. When you get that chance, do not miss it. I had an actor, colleague of mine, um, called me randomly out of the blue in 2008. Uh, David and I had worked together on a couple shows here in the DC area and he had recently moved up to New York. He told me that he thought I was good enough to play piano in New York and I, I thought he was crazy. But here I am, my weather plan had fallen through, I hit some speed bumps, he said, hey, if it, if it falls through, give me a call. So by January 2009, I had two roommates in a Harlem apartment and uh, had hit the ground running on trying to be, become a professional musician in New York. After a few months, I was just starting to find my footing when my break happened. I was doing a show for free when my boss, Brian, got a frantic call from the music director of a production of Dreamgirls. After an initial six-week run at the historic Apollo Theater in Harlem, this production was scheduled to go out on a national tour for six months, and it was later extended to a, a full year with a three-week sit-down in Tokyo, right in the middle of the itinerary. Um, the traveling band had already been hired, but the issue was that they had let go of their piano player in the middle of rehearsals because it turns out he couldn't actually read music. He had an amazing ear, but couldn't keep up with the tweaks and the changes that were being made in the rehearsal room. So once he got fired, Sam, the Dreamgirls music director, was very blunt in his ask because the rhythm section of the band was on stage in full costumes and wigs. He's like, I need a black guy who can read music as soon as humanly possible. Well, when Brian got that frantic call, he referred me to Sam, who had, who had me come in and audition for him later that day. I didn't have time to be nervous. I didn't have time to tense up. I just had to trust the years of practice and training that I had under my belt. And that's what Banneker has instilled in you over these past four years, a foundation of learning and trust that cannot be shaken in the face of adversity. Sam offered me the job, and that began a journey to Broadway that I never thought would have been possible. Uh, word of mouth is paramount in show business, and building relationships through networking and performing your job at a high level really increases your likelihood of getting hired for future gigs down the road. But something I've learned along the way in this business is something I feel I can, that, that can be applied to in any industry. If an employer is doing an adequate background check, they'll unearth something that you might wish would have stayed hidden. When I was 18, there was no TikTok, there was no Snapchat. So before you click send, think about how someone else may view that video or that post. Always put your best foot forward because you never know who is watching your work and scoping out your socials. Also, being kind to people goes, really goes a long way. I guarantee you that people will talk about you behind your back. And it's up to you to make sure that you give them positive things to share. So folks apparently got wind of the work I had done while I was out on the road because once I got back to New York City, uh, I turned that Dream Girls tour into many successful Broadway productions. I was asked to be in the pit at Motown the Musical, where I helped put Barry Gordy's story and vision on stage. I was the associate musical director for the revival of The Color Purple, where I got to, work, uh, where I got to meet Oprah and work directly with Jennifer Hudson and Cynthia Erivo. That show won the Tony Award in 2016 for Best Revival of a Musical, and I was the music director for Once on This Island, which won the 2018 Tony for Best Revival. My next Broadway show was Tina, the Tina Turner musical. That show ran from 2019 to 2022 with a 18 month pause there in the middle for uh, the pandemic, obviously. I had the pleasure of chatting with the late Tina Turner on, on our opening night, and it was truly magical to be in the presence of such an icon. Uh, though immensely grateful for my career trajectory, there have been many moments where I've questioned the type of opportunities I was getting. Why was I only being called for shows like Motown and Tina? Was I being seen as someone who could only handle the black shows? 
Did anyone bother to read my resume, to ask about my classical training, to look deeper than the color of my skin? I am proud that my current show isn't about race. New York, New York is a musical that's loosely based on the 1977 film that starred Robert De Niro and Liza Minnelli. I get to conduct a 19-piece orchestra and lead a 37-person cast eight times a week, and it feels amazing to be seen as a complete musician. Don't let others tell you what you're worth. Show them. I'll close with this. The power of community, the value of community is real. I didn't become valedictorian at Banneker on my own. Because everyone around me was also superb, it pushed me harder to achieve greatness. Uh, you know, I felt like pretty big stuff marching up to Harvard as a valedictorian. But once I got there, it felt like everyone else was also a valedictorian. And I had to struggle a little bit to find my way. But the group of friends I made in Cambridge are still some of my closest. The best man at my wedding uh, lived next door to me my freshman year. Uh, he now works at Goldman Sachs and is way smarter than I am. But I believe we've made each other better people by sharing our life experiences. Surround yourself with people who respect you, people who are smarter than you, people who can make you better. The world out there won't always love you the way Banneker has loved you, but there is no place on earth that could have prepared you better. <laughs> to Ms. Berger, thank you for having me today. And to the class of 2023, be proud of all that you've accomplished, but don't forget there is still much work to be done. Teddy Roosevelt once said, and I quote, nothing in the world is worth having or worth doing unless it means effort, pain, difficulty. I have never in my life envied a human being who led an easy life. I have envied a great many people who led difficult lives and led them well, end quote. Go and be achievers. Go and be leaders, endure the pain and difficulty, use it to your advantage, and lead great lives. Thank you, and congratulations. Let's give him a, another round of applause. Great job. Those are really inspiring words. Um, I want to express my gratitude to the parents, grandparents, and guardians at this time for being brave enough to have entrusted your students in, uh, to the staff and administration at Benjamin Banneker Academic High School. To the grads, you have experienced many things during your tenure at Banneker. New teachers, new friends, new building, and of course the pandemic which forced unforeseen obstacles that cheated you out of almost two years of academic and social engagement. But through it all, you have been resilient and demonstrated the discipline and the determination to reach your goals. You have prevailed and accepted and embraced your hardships. You have exemplary records and accolades. You've earned athletic accomplishments, achieved admirable pass rates on the AP exam, and been accepted in two months some of the most prestigious colleges and universities in the country. Moreover, the experience of success will help you develop and believe that your effort does pay off. You have been prepared and you are ready for college as well as throughout life. You have gone through something together, though it all will never forget how you stayed the course. Through the combined efforts of school, family, and community, you have been provided the foundations for a prosperous future. Going forward, I will look to you as the social changers, the barrier breakers, and the history makers. You will be the new wave of thinkers that approached all challenges differently than those before you. You will not take relationships for granted nor will you be passive about your passion. You will be the voices of the voiceless. You will do it with love. Know who and remember, know who you are and remember everyone is someone. 
I cannot wait to see what you'll do with the lessons you have learned. You will be a prolific generation. You are 2023 strong. I would like Deputy Chancellor Bay to meet me at the podium. And now, by the power vested in me, by the mayor and the District of Columbia, by the chancellor of the District of Columbia Public Schools, Lewis Ferriby, I certify that the 138 members of the class of 2023 have completed the requirements for graduation from Benjamin Banneker <laughs> Academic High School. On behalf of Mayor Bowser, and Chancellor Fairbly, I enthusiastically accept the class of 2023 from Benjamin Banneker <laughs> Academic High School. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2023 graduates. I would like all the guests, my stage guests, to please stand up so we can award you guys your diplomas. Jennifer Morales Garcia. Viviana Diaz. Asia Chanel Jones. Nia Turner. Leslie Andrade Morales. Allison Rose Saunders. Kelmaya Sanker. Karima Dean. Jasmine Lie McCain. Brooke Dashe Givens. Macy Rodriguez Castillo. Emily Lisbeth Mejia. Noel Mulagueta. Zakaya Walker. Nu Quinn Dow. Sarawit Shifwau. Mia Isabella Ventura. Sierra Jefferson. Viviana Aracila Guzman. Bezawit Admusu. Admasu. Samia Armani Hammond. Kennedy Christine Brooks. Jasmine Anaya McDuffie. Gabrielle Cole. Brandy Lopez. Jessica Amaya Torres. 
Jennifer Velasquez. Abigail Bazell. Alejandra Jimenez. Bethel Ayel. Maddie Elizabeth Isaac. Mary Tola. Taya Littman. Genesis Oriano Castillo. Raven Madison Wallace. Miche Jones. Ruby Riveres Andriata. Antonina Winsler. Nikaya James. Chamaka Orisakwe. Mary Mawit Belai. Elani Yahira Diaz. Zion Mackenzie Gray, Joel Walker, Daniela Flores Villatoro, LaKayla Rory, Arsama Gebre Exaber, Briseida. Mejia, Gilma Velasquez, Kelby Siana Chichester, Kamora Donye Anderson, Alejandra Amaya Lozano. Tyler Javier Lugo. Antonia Travel Hils Antia Travel Hilson. Debria Soraya Bird. Trinity Calcote Johnson. Inasia Franklin. Naomi Monime. Ashley Natasha Torres. Mia Nicole Douglas. Mary Ginyard Fuguado. Andalus Siva Desparte. Michaela Stewart. Tamara Winter Robinson. Paul Couts.
Tyler Gabrielle Michaela Conti. Abyssinia B. Ayale. Ivana Chupo. Shakela Smith. Martina Mendoza. Maritza Limas Marsada. Aiden Pierre. Prince Green. Jimmy Argetta. Kyle Sullivan II. Nigel Xavier Bronson. Autumn Everett. Nasir Yvonne Durham. Kiara Carol James. Josue Acevedo. Christian Gabriel Cruz. Angel Abrego Montero. Calcadon Gabeta. Mackenzie Gale. Terry Jones. Nehemiah Sellers. Mason Turner. Chelsea Lazo. Autumn Monet Smith. Diana Rumerez Romero. Kaylee Martinez. Kamora Hendrick. Lauren Renee Redman. Leah Renee Redman. Ryan Ayana Baldwin. Nazia Alasia Edwards. Shamirma Hazel Woku. Clark Elizabeth Weathersby. Yakira Nesaya Vincent. Destin Marshall. Begurthy Mills. Tyler Campbell. 
Miles Jeffers. Donna Williams. Blessing and Cope. Joanna Antwi. The Amir Morgan Fleming. Jafe Watkins. Nicholas Smith. Sion Robinson. Courtney Suggs. D'Angelo Miles Madden. Anthony Del Cid Justo. Cameron Sinclair McClarty. Isaiah Honeycutt. Amina Zakia Aleem. Rhea Jordan. Jordan Reed. Michael Rosa. David Naji. Alicia Sayaka Hardy. Kai Mariama Carb. Joseph De La Torre. Kareem Aaron Telemac. Charles Aze. Amelia Barnes. Ernest Venable Jr. Abenezer Abate. Natnael Ayalu. Omar Musa. Oliad Bacha. Hazel Warchow. Nash Noel Campo. Ashton Stewart. Malik Gay. Emerson Saravia Ayala. Bethel Eberinga, 
Benjamin Davis. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2023 graduates.